Honestly, you guys, I am pissed off. I'm pissed off. I never do rants, but I don't know what's happened to me tonight. I was so angry watching that game today. Another self-inflicted defeat. Listen, I understand that tomorrow I'll be calmer. And when I do the talking points video and the player ratings video, I'll have a different perspective. But doing the match review right after the game, I can't help my emotions. I am angry. And to be honest, I think it's a game today where quite a few people need to take an L. Even Lampard's, you know, for me, the lineup was interesting, but it was a gamble that didn't pay off. You know, Gilmore, Kova and Jorginho in a midfield three. As I was tweeting, these guys were playing as if it was five sides. They all love coming to the ball, short pass after short pass. No one made runs in behind. No one played between the lines. There was none of that in the first half. And, you know, I'm surprised why Lampard decided to pick that midfield. I mean, I get you want to rest Mason a bit, but one thing I don't understand for managers in general, not directed at Lampard, is, you know, why can't Mason start once the game's in our favour, then take him off, and then maybe we defend and maybe play on the counter-attack? Why do it the other way around? It doesn't make too much sense to me. But again, you know, I'm seeing it from a fan perspective. I'm not a manager. I don't understand the context of the players conditioning and their fitness. I am i don't know none of that. I'm going to keep it real. But still, you know, it's no surprise why in the first half we look so poor. And the most annoying thing out of everything is that United weren't even good. United weren't even good again. Another self-inflicted defeat from stupid mistakes, stupid pieces of play. Steve, oh, I could go on. I can honestly go on. Yo, I think I need to talk about the positives just so I can calm down a bit, you guys. Now, a few positives tonight. Number one, Reese James. Instant positive. Instant, instant positive. The guy just looks so calm. He just looks so good going forward in the final third. He looks strong in the tackle. There was that time he got nutmegs by Rashford, but of course he wins the ball back again. He looks like he's ready to play first team football. I'm hoping Frank uses Reese a lot more. You know, some of the pieces of play where he doesn't lose the ball because he's a football player. He can play through pressure. He can find solutions when he's getting pressed. You know, he can run in field to, you know, help shift the ball to the other side. He can do all these things that I don't see from Aspilicueta. And some of the some of the crosses that Reese plays today, pfft, there was that one in particular where, you know, maybe if Billy wasn't in that position, let's say it's Mason or someone else, that could have been a guaranteed goal. That was how amazing that delivery was. He really was a big positive tonight. You know, he did, he did what he had to do. He stepped up and I'm hoping to see this guy play a lot more. Another positive was Gay at the back. <sighs> this boy was impressive. I mean it, you guys. Incredibly impressive. The composure. How many times was he playing first time passes out from the back? He looked comfortable. He looked confident. No one was getting past him. His positional sense was on point, but the way he was passing the ball, left foot and right foot. Some of the players he produced in this academy, you guys, I mean, you know, compared to Maguire, <laughs> the lack of composure that an 80 million pound defender was showing at times with a guy that's barely played any games in the first team from the academy looked better than him. It's incredible. And, you know, with Gay, if he's able to play this well, I'm guessing we'll see him play a lot more, but honestly, he was very, very impressive today. And I guess the final positive, the final positive was Kurt Zuma, but I'm gonna say something. The final 10 minutes from Kurt Zuma wasn't good enough. Now, it's not because he was poor defensively. I was disappointed that he kept forcing the play every single time. It's like, Kurt, you're better than that. You kept forcing the passes, forcing the play for what? And I think actually, you know what? I don't even need to talk about Zuma. I think the main thing that kind of worries me a bit, but at the same time, I've got perspective, I understand why. You know, the lack of control at times. Like, I feel like we're constantly playing FIFA at, at times. I'm not saying consistently, I'm saying at times. It feels like a FIFA game, you know, it's the final 10 minutes, we need to get a goal, let's spam passes forward, let's hope something happens. It doesn't work like that. We did well in the second half, passing the ball, switching it from left to right, keeping possession of the ball, forcing United players onto us before beating their press and playing through them. But that final 15, 10 minutes, for some reason, I don't understand why the players have stopped playing football. But it has been something that I have seen a few times in, in our games. You know, at times when things aren't going in our favour, we don't have that patience to keep the ball, maintain our shape, maintain our game and wait for the goal to come. 
But there have been positives in this. The game against Newcastle did tell me that we can play with control, but we need to understand it's a very young team. I can't expect these guys to have the experience of guys who are like five years older than them. I think that's ridiculous for anyone to assume that. I'm hoping that as the season progresses, we can make more strides to improve in these areas because I think that if we were able to keep control of the game better without constantly passing forward, I, I get it. We want to play quick. We want to create overloads, getting behind our opposition. But, you know, at times it's not always going to work like that. At times, sometimes you just need to slow the ball down, keep possession, keep your shape and slowly wait for your opportunities to come. But anyway, you guys, that's the main football talk that I am going to analyze in deeper detail in, you know, future videos. But I'm sorry, the negativity is going to continue. And I think a player today that deserves nearly all the negativity is Marcus Alonso. Now, listen, he has played well at certain times this season. I've rightfully praised him. People have. You know, you do that. If a player plays well, you can't just hold a, you know, the pass against him. But at the same time, we know Marcus Alonso. And we know that consistency has never been part of his name. The stupid way this guy gave away the penalty. How lazy, how stupid. I'm sorry. Like, you could, everyone could see you're using your weaker foot in a position where you don't even have to make the tackle because Gay had blocked the channel. It was no need for that. You just put us under the bus for no reason. They make it 1-0 from the penalty and you put ourselves in the back foot. And for what? And, you know, sometimes I see these, like, really stupid mistakes. I, I never insult players, but I'm sorry. Sometimes I see really stupid mistakes from Alonso whenever the game's not really going in his favour. Now, listen, I understand that was it was hard from a tactical point of view. You know, in the first half, United were pressing us down our flanks, especially focusing down the left-hand side because, you know, we like to focus our plays more down the left-hand side than the right-hand side. Could Lampard have maybe done something within the game to give us more of an option to the right-hand side? Who knows? But, you know, because we were playing that way in the first half, you know, we really struggled to play out. Alonso was regularly getting dispossessed or giving the ball away. And there's one thing I've noticed with Marcus Alonso. Let's say he has the possibility to carry the ball a bit to find, you know, different passing options, different passing channels. He never does that. He'll stand in the same position, just even carrying the ball just one knee ahead. That can make a difference sometimes. No, this guy will just pass or hit or just do the stupidest things. And Listen, he's a decent player who has good moments. But the thing is, when you play for a club of this size, I'm always saying, you guys, we need to have high standards. Consistency needs to be part of your name. If consistency is not there, then you need to go. And Alonso has consistently shown that he's not the right fit at this club. I'm sorry. He's had a lot of great moments, but they're few and far between. It's not consistent. Oh, my God. And of course, he has to play a part in the second goal. What ex Exactly the example I've been talking about. Carry the ball a tiny bit to find a passing option. Oh my God. But how fake was that Rashford goal though? How fake was that? You know what the funny thing was? In my stupid heads, in my stupid head, I was like, I guarantee this guy's scoring. It's United's, it's, it's Rashford's, you know? They produce these fake moments against us. And the funny thing is, what did United create in this game? Absolutely nothing. It was shit house at its finest. It was an unbelievable free kick from Rashford. I mean, my God, it's one of the best free kicks I've seen for a very long time. I mean, it was incredible. But Rashford, a guy that is regularly attempting that, and it goes to Rosie every single time. Why tonight? Why tonight did that ball have to go into the top left corner, the most perfect area where the ball had to be? Oh, but again, you know, this is what happens when you don't take control. And I think that's definitely going to be something that this team will definitely get better at as they mature, as they play more games together, as they get used to the Premier League. That's definitely an area we are going to get better in. And let's not forget, you know, we still have a lot of players to return back to the first team. Once Ruben and Kante are here, I'm sure a lot of my critiques won't be there anymore. But I'm sorry, you guys. Unfortunately, I have to continue on with the negativity. Now, here's the thing. I sympathise with the attacking players, you know, Pulisic and hudson Odoi. Maybe, maybe I was thinking Lampard was going to have these guys swap positions more in the game. I think in the first half, it could have done both players a lot of favours. Um, I thought hudson Odoi was quite poor at times. 
but I was impressed with how he ended the game because he ended the game much better and was it a surprise that he looked better when he played on the left hand side but he was able to cut inside link up and play between the lines the type of play we need and I have to say I was disappointed with Pulisic today and I'm going to say this and I understand that you know sometimes when you say things about players you know a few guys like to get really emotional and they just feel like you're hating I'd like to think certain people would be more mature than that and I hope people are but one thing I've said before and I'm going to say this again Pulisic hides when the game gets too physical I've seen it, you guys. You know, he gets knocked to the floor, he gets fouled, and he hides. He, he doesn't rise to the occasion. He's not putting himself in areas where you have to accept that you are going to get fouled, but you need to do it to help the team. And even though Alonso was awful today, absolutely terrible, I have to admit maybe Pulisic could have helped him out a bit more if he found better positions on the left-hand sides. But again, you know, he's young, and I'm not going to hold it against guys who are under 21. I mean, come on. Who's going to get so mad against players who are under 21, who don't even have the full experience yet? So I'm hoping that some of you guys that like to get very emotional for no reason are going to calm down a bit. But I'm really hoping that that's an area in which Pulisic will improve in. And with Hudson Odoi, yeah, at times his confidence looked a bit, at times his confidence looked a bit short. I think down the right hand side, he wasn't really attempting to get past his man as much. At times when he was through on goal, you're hoping for a bit more composure. But again, what can you expect from an 18 year old that hasn't even played, what, 50 games in his career? This is the perspective we need to have with Pulisic and with Hudson Odoi. We're talking about players who are not the finished article. They have a lot of great attributes of their game. They can only get better, which is the positive. But we can critique the player. Don't abuse them. Don't hate them. Critique them. We can do that because they're playing for us. And when you play for a club like us, the levels are high and the standards are higher. But to end things, you know, I have to say maybe Lampard, it was the first game this season where he got a few things wrong. I think the first team lineup, if you're going to play with Pulisic and Hudson Odoi, if Mason Mount was playing as a cam, both players would have played better in the first half. So that's the context surrounding that. I think his substitutions were a bit too slow. You know, it's the Carabao Cup. If we don't, obviously, win the game in full time it's going to go to penalties so the quicker you make subs the more time those subs have to influence the game and make things happen i was a bit surprised to not see that from lampard today um i thought tammy came on a bit too late i thought mason came on a bit too late as well and um yeah bringing on pedro what was the point in the end <laughs> i would have stuck with pulisic instead knowing that he would have had more space and time to play in and i'm sure pulisic would have improved as the game went on just how hudson Odoi did I'm really surprised Pedro played. I, I don't get why he did. Uh, he did nothing. Of, I mean, of course, Pedro did nothing because he isn't as good as he used to be. But for me, the main person that needs to take the criticism is Frank Lampard. Now, I'm going to wrap up my match review today. And yeah, I understand it's very negative. You know, I'm emotional. I'm angry after the game. But of course, you know, I'm going to watch the game again. I'll have deeper perspectives. I think that it's okay to maybe critique certain things. But at the end of the day, we are only going to get better. We're only going to get stronger. Yeah, you guys, I know I'm a bit negative today, but, you know, what can I do? I'm human. I'm a disappointed. I think Lampard could have been a bit better today. But my last example, you know, if we're going to be playing long, then why not play Giroud instead of Tammy? I thought if Tammy's coming on, it means that we're going to play our game and play our football, but we didn't in those final 10, 15 minutes. If we're going to just pump it long, we should have brought on Giroud. I don't know why we didn't do that but again you guys i can keep critiquing and critiquing i don't like doing it and i need to wrap things up right now but of course in the comment section below give me your thoughts and opinions after the game i'm still a bit annoyed that it's another self-inflicted defeat i need to accept that these defeats will happen as the season goes on we're a team in our first year development we can never forget that perspective but you guys on that note I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving and try and calm down tonight and relax. I don't know what's been happening with me tonight. When that Rashford goal went in, oh, you know what? I'm not going to continue anymore. I'm the NFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow.